Good morning and welcome. We would like to welcome all the visitors that are joining us today and all of our radio listeners. Today we will have a second collection for the youth ministry in our parish. Today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday and our entrance hymn can be found in the Glory and Praise book, number 387, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 387. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. In order to more worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. to God in the highest 
man on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the same one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, um, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, 
and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Was it necessary for Jesus to rise from the dead? Was it necessary that the resurrection happen in order for us to be saved? The theological answer is no. The act and work of redemption was accomplished on Good Friday. It is through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross that he pays the price of Adam's sin. And because that price is now paid, we are able to experience salvation and have the hope of everlasting life. It could have stopped there. The resurrection wasn't necessary for salvation. But God in his love and goodness gives us the resurrection because he knows us. He knows what we need. Imagine moving forward and not having the resurrection. After departing Golgotha on that Good Friday, imagine the disciples, how lost they would have felt. Yes, they probably wouldn't even have realized that now they're able to have salvation. But God knew that we needed the comfort of the resurrection so that we will be able to see what lies in store for us. Had Christ not been risen, then we wouldn't know the fullness of what lies ahead and the beauty of the resurrection that is in store for all of us at the judgment. On this Sunday, which the church celebrates as Divine Mercy Sunday, I'm reminded sometimes of people that struggle with the sacrament of confession, and I think many of us do at certain points in our life. That's normal. I know some will say, well, I can just tell God my sins. I don't need to confess to a priest. Well, you can do that, but Jesus pretty clearly in the gospel has given that power and responsibility, I should say, to the church. So you can take your shot. I'm going to do what Jesus says. But I think the reason that Jesus gives us the sacrament is because we as humans, just like we needed to see the resurrection, we need to hear those words. I absolve you of your sins. Yeah, I can talk to God in the woods and tell him my sins, but I walk away from that just like walking away from the cross. It doesn't quite leave me with that anticipation and joy and the relief of actually hearing a human saying those words. The forgiving power of Christ flowing through the sacrament. I absolve you. May God grant you pardon and peace. We need to hear these words. And that's why we need Easter Sunday. That's why we need the resurrection. Because we have to see the glory of what lies ahead in order to get through the challenges 
that we face each day. In order to get through the Good Fridays in our life, we have to focus on the Easter Sundays. When suffering comes our way, whether it be an illness, grief from a loss of a family member or a loved one, loss of a job, change, situation in life, moving, all those things that are stressors for us, those are our little Good Fridays and crosses. But we bear them with the hope of the resurrection. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, God is once again inviting us to share in his mercy, to hear those words of comfort. May God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you from your sins. We need those sensory things. We need to hear those words, just as we need to know it's the resurrection and the empty tomb that lies beyond the empty cross. Together we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. <clears throat> he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, <clears throat> who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the world to come. Confident in our Father's love and mercy, we offer to him now our needs and our prayers. For the successors, successors to the apostles in the church today, commissioned to preach to the people that, like Peter, they may boldly proclaim the resurrection of Christ and the forgiveness of sins in his name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the great cornerstone, may not be rejected by the builders of our society, but that the right hand of the Lord may be exalted in him, building nations with life, justice, morality, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christians may offer to the Paschal victim their thankful praises today, renewing their vows to him with joy and gratitude for his victory of divine love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer, who grieve, who are distressed in mind and heart, that Jesus, who brought unexpected exultation to Mary Magdalene and the apostles on that first Easter Sunday, may give them also a share of his rising to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithfully departed ones, who were signed with the cross of Jesus, that the power of his glorious resurrection may bring them rejoicing into the wedding banquet of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, your children, offer you these our needs. Draw near to us now and answer these prayers, which we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
As our gifts are prepared, please join in singing number 379, O Sons and Daughters. And we will have a second collection today for the youth ministry in our parish. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to loud you yet, yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, are they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day before he was to suffer took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Congratulations to Eleanor Kurtz, who was baptized last Sunday. In your kindness, please pray for the repose of the soul of Rodney Milfeld, whose funeral mass was this past week. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Francis Sprawl. Visitation will be on Thursday from 8.30 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. at Bosler Funeral Home, and the funeral mass will be at 10 a.m. A recessional hymn is number 378, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 378. Also yesterday, this weekend of so many events and exciting things, we had our first Holy Communion for the second graders of our parish, so we're very proud of them, and I assured them of, of your prayers as they continue this lifelong relationship with our Eucharistic Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, Lord of God, trust in the hell of Satan and all the evil spirits. Upon the cross, ah. 